You know, it's not often in our lifetime that we have the honor of recognizing an individual of the magnitude and stature as the person that we're recognizing this evening. And that's why we consider tonight's occasion a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity as we salute a truly one-of-a-kind individual, Eleanor Wright. You are a very important part of this celebration by your prayers, your participation, your contributions, and your support. You have demonstrated your appreciation for all that Eleanor continues to do for us. If this charming lady had chosen the road that leads to wealth and fame, she undoubtedly would be the recipient of several Grammy Awards by now. But she didn't choose that road. Instead, she chose to follow in the humble footsteps of Jesus. And he has magnified her talents and her ministry because she seeks to glorify him. After reading Eleanor's autobiography, The Window of My Soul, I became convinced that the theme for her life certainly must be as reflected in the words of probably one of the first songs that she composed, Be Willing to Serve the Lord. In that song she says, if you know there's a work to do, be willing to serve the Lord. And if you falter, just start out anew, but be willing to serve the Lord. And then she says, I'll be willing to serve the Lord. I'm looking forward to my reward. Working hard, not for a Grammy, but for a starry crown. And she says, if I have to climb a mountain high, I'll start my journey with my goal in sight, toiling with all my might, but be willing to serve the Lord. What a model she has been and is for all of us. And now to Aunt Eleanor, as we call her, who unfortunately couldn't be here today, but she will be viewing this videotape later uh, from her home in Germantown, Ohio, to her husband, Harold. We know him as Brother James, and we're so happy that you could be here this evening. <laughs> to their six children, let's see, Philip, Mark, Jackie, Carla, Marcy and Andrea, thank you. Nori was supposed to be my cue here for the six children. I understand there are 11 grandchildren, a host of other relatives, friends, supporters. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct privilege to present to you a song for Eleanor. Thank you. Eleanor was one of 14 children. It became apparent at an early age that she had a special musical gift. Her parents were unable to afford formal music lessons, so her talent improved gradually and quite naturally, which is the miracle of her musical excellence. After her marriage to Harold Brother James Wright at age 18, her first public performance was with the Wright Family Ensemble. Over the years, she has performed with many groups, but the most popular of them has been the famous Blind Wright Trio. They were born on a Friday evening as they all sang at Grandpa Wright's house. The original members were Audrey Wright Dickerson, Rudy Wright, Dale's wife, and of course, Eleanor. They performed all over the United States as well as in Bermuda and Switzerland. Eleanor is now an accomplished professional singer, composer, pianist, and arranger in her own right. As many already know, she has written approximately 200 songs, and we have to say approximately because even now, God's Spirit may be inspiring her with message number 201. Brother James can tell you of the times when songs have come to her even in the middle of the night with her tapping out the tempo in bed while reaching for anything or everything. Once it was even a brown paper bag on which to write the words, lest they be lost before daybreak. 
Eleanor's songs of experience and encouragement are written in a variety of styles, including anthems, children's songs, gospels, and wedding songs. Many of them have been recorded and published in sheet music form. Let's enjoy a few of them now as we prepare to listen to Cheryl Rogers sing These Other Hands, Elder Greg Jackson with You Don't Know, and then Carol Ann Williams with I've Got a Long Way to Go.
so forgiving every time that I disobey you don't know how much I love And you don't know how much the Lord loved me. The Lord loved me. You don't know how much I need to go. How many times I've had to pray. You don't know that He keeps me.
11 grandchildren, came from a very large family of 14 children. She was second to the youngest. She remembers as a child every Sunday the family going to the street corners of Dayton, Ohio with her father, an independent minister of the Church of God in Christ, pillar and ground of the truth church. It's unclear as to whether he was the founder or not, but we do know that every Sunday he preached on the street corners of Dayton. Each family member was forced to learn an instrument for the purpose of the street preaching ministry. Guess what? Her first instrument was the triangle. She began piano at age eight. They were very, very poor, quite poor, and her father, even in an effort to maintain control and to keep his daughters from growing too fast, would take even any of the high heel shoes that were donated to them, would take the shoes and take the heels off of them so that they might not grow too fast. <laughs> Now, let's continue with our delightful evening of songs from Eleanor, with our song to Eleanor, by a series of songs. Cover me, O Lord, with thy righteousness, and I'll be willing to serve the Lord, by Danielle Fordham Brown. Following Danielle, Come Into My Life, by Sister Valerie Hobson, and then Hallelujah, Home at Last, by Nolet Leader Hutton, Carol Ann Williams, and Danielle Fordham Brown.
her banana cream pie, and especially from Grandma Wright's recipe files, blackberry cake. Pie cake combined and her lemon chiffon pie. Well, you might be interested also in knowing that Eleanor is an avid game player. She especially enjoys playing Scrabble. She especially likes to play Scrabble with her husband, Brother James. Brother James had been known, he had been known, to literally scribble letters on blank Scrabble, <laughs> on blank Scrabble cards, just so, tiles, just so that he might be able to have an opportunity to at least stay in the competition.
fascinating thing about Eleanor is the fact that the same creative nativity which enables her to accomplish so much in the field of music seems to manifest itself also on every level of her existence. For instance, when money was tight and she needed a painting to hang over the fireplace in her home, she painted it herself. When it was time to have her sofa reupholstered, she did it herself. When she needed an extra long garment bag, she made it herself. She's been known to make all sorts of things from wedding gowns and bedspreads to piano benches and music stands. In this convenience-oriented society, it's truly refreshing to encounter an avid do-it-yourselfer like Eleanor. Her, her ability to improvise is positively uncanny. As a matter of fact, there's a family joke that goes around that indicates that if you hand Eleanor a brick and three dollars, she can create almost anything that needs to be created. And so it was that last year, on her 65th birthday, each of her children presented her with a wrapped, a gift-wrapped brick and three dollars. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to listen to the silver tones of that great baritone and friend of the family, Brother Larry Blackwell singing, He Finds Time for Me. Following Larry, we'll hear from the Blint Wrights, the second generation singing, Let Down the Ladder and I Live Because He Died. Thank you. 
Alice Thomas became interested in music in the late 1960s, and Ella Moore worked with her, and she became the accompanist of the Blenrights until 1977, the year in which the Blenrights retired. However, she continued to work with Ella Moore in her solo work, and she re resides in New Carrollton, Ohio, and attends the Kettering Church. Now we'll hear from the second generation. They are comprised of Carla Wright Coleman, Jacqueline Wright Palmer, Eleanor's two daughters, raise your hands please, and Deborah Wright Strafford, Dale and Rudy's daughter. Let's be blessed by the second generation. They only sing Glenn Wright music.
I would say is her tremendous ability to empathize with you. She can step down inside your innermost feelings, get right down beside where you are, and give you an emotional hug, make you feel loved, understood, and appreciated. It is this quality that makes her music so emotionally gripping and universally appealing. As you add to this quality, the inspiration of God, you begin to understand the awe-inspiring power of Eleanor Wright's ministry and song. Sister Wright, I love you. Your ex-pastor, an old friend, Patson, Greg Jackson.
Maxine Logan Jones singing I Wouldn't Have It Any Other Way.
night long seeking some answers from him. I could not understand why a particular burden had been allowed to plague me for so long. I was not an, I was not an, when, when all else fails, try God type person. Quite the contrary, my first thought in any crisis was pray. In fact, my right now position and his right now power were a miracle working combination that I knew I could count on. But it had not worked to alleviate this particular problem. How long had it been? I'm talking years. And in all that time, I kept thinking, someday soon, and I constantly sought relief from it, expecting God to lift it. I tossed and turned and prayed till morning. Then I reached for my Bible and opened it, hoping to be directed by the Spirit to some encouraging passage of Scripture. I found myself reading the story of Naaman, the leper, in the fifth chapter of Second Kings. I started to turn from it, feeling that this story had little to do with what I was going through and could hardly afford me any comfort in my plight. Somehow, I felt impressed to continue reading. And as I did, my mind went back to the first time I heard Elder C.D. Brooks preach about this man. The graphic scenes were logged in my memory in detail, and as I recalled them, I got all caught up in Naaman's experience. That night, Naaman the leper was born. And now, no legend, leader of Naaman the
Uh, Nancy Dudley is the brains, I guess you'd say, behind this, and I would just like to have her come up here just for a second. about three or four people and all the planning took place really over the telephone and <laughs> conference calls and what have you. Uh, Reger Smith is the musical director and he's over here at the keyboard. And then, and Reger worked many hours till uh, probably two, three, four, five in the morning. The, uh, all the graphics that you see. <laughs> Reader's responsible for. But we are so happy. We know that this program wouldn't have been possible without all of the assistance of, of so many people. Gail Morrison, uh, who's behind the scenes at the top, is responsible for all of the, the stage. Marie Pierre with the lighting. Eric Longley with the video. And many liaisons at all of the DC uh, metro churches, and they're listed in the program, so we invite you to take a look at those. Um, standing beside me is A.T. Westney. and the funds are going to be used to help produce a special uh, publication. And A.T. is going to just tell us a little about this publication. Exactly what is it that we're trying to do? Well, briefly, uh, Eleanor Wright is, is a living uh, legacy. Uh, she's, songwriters are a rare breed. Good Christian songwriters are even rare. Eleanor has been responsible for probably almost 200 songs. Some of them you may not have heard before. Just this past week, after speaking with her, I received a packet in the mail of some things that she would like to have put in print so that they can live on for others who may not have known her personally. Um, my, where I come in, I guess, is uh, in looking at the music, putting it together, and uh, just doing what I can to, to coordinate a publication that will contain as many of her songs as, as resources will permit. Amen. Let's give a hand to A.T., who is a true professional. Now we have a, a video presentation of Eleanor that was made, I guess, about a week or two weeks ago. And since she knew she couldn't be here, she uh, wanted to just let us know how thankful she is for what we're doing this evening. So let's take.
and sisters, all my co-workers, all of you who will be singing this music throughout the speechless ages, even of eternity, as we tell the story of how God brought us through. Thanks to all of you.
Thank you very much. Let us pray, Lord. Oh, Father of love, how our hearts have been stirred, how our lives and our life courses have been encouraged and altered positively through the ministry of one Eleanor Wright. You gave her a song, and her song has lifted each of us at one time or another. We come boldly before the throne of God tonight because we recognize that we are not requesting anything for ourselves selfishly, but we are asking, dear Lord, that you will impress your people to support a ministry that shall continue on and on. I beg that you would please bless these offerings. I beg that you would even now begin to impress those individuals on a business level who will be contacted to help make this project happen. That they will recognize that this is not just any ordinary project. And I beg right now that you will even give them the spirit of liberality. Those who must be paid, give them the spirit of liberal return to your project. Do it now is our prayer. We thank you for hearing. We thank you for answering. In the blessed name of Christ, our Redeemer, let God's people say amen. Thank you. 
Hackney. Maya Shep remembers visiting Germantown, Ohio on many occasions while growing up in Indianapolis. Even though New Genesis is not singing one of Eleanor's compositions this evening, Maisha says that they are adding several of Eleanor's songs to their repertoire. We hope that you will enjoy New Genesis singing Peace Be Still. Following a tribute, we'll also hear from Nathalie McMillan singing I Just Talked to Jesus. And finally, in this set, Elder Whitley Phipps singing What Color is Love. And now, New Genesis.
Just 
I think you need to fast forward 10. I'm happy for this moment. Those who know me know I really hate not to be able to talk. So while they're doing that, I would like to say what a pleasure it is for us to participate on this program, particularly um, for me because the first time I grew up in Allegheny West Conference. Amen. Amen. I love my Allegheny West Conference. And the first time I was able to hear Allegheny was when I was about eight years old. And I remember hearing, I feel like singing the song that we're going to do this evening that I arranged keeping her in my heart when I was about 10 years old. I'm not sure what she'll feel about, how she'll feel about the arrangement, but I'm sure as a songwriter, I can relate to the fact of how God can bless you and do your music decades after the music has been composed. So I hope that she finds joy in the number of people that she's been able to bless through the song, I feel like so.
this to my aunt, Eleanor Ray. She encouraged me to do my um, Christian rap album, so I did it, and... <laughs>
Brother James. From the time I saw you at Town Hall and all of those times coming up to Andrews University, Brother James, and you come out on the stage and hop, hop, hop. And Lord, don't you let me fail you that much. Well, I want you to know I did have my dream to come true. That summer, the, that first summer the Blend Rights went to Bermuda, you weren't able to come, but I was there. Thank you. 
in the back. He thought that meant quit. He said, keep on the shit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sponsor this program. Let us just, can we stand so you can see who we are? Nancy, would you, would you stand up, please? I know you.